Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of BSD Synergy. This week's episode is entitled My True OS Form. I'm your host, Mason Egger, and let's just get on into it. So, after last week, I had thought that I was going to be starting some features and other tutorials on this show, but then I realized I had forgotten PCBSD. And it's, since it's not really a main flavor, it kind of doesn't count, but it is extremely important and important enough for me to dedicate a whole episode for it. So, PCBSD was first presented in 2005 by its founder, Chris Moore. For those of you who watch BSD now, Chris Moore is one of the hosts. They first released their beta on April 15th of 2005, and in April 2006, they released version 1.0, um, which was a little bit confusing at first because it was based directly off of the numbering system of FreeBSD. Uh, so, 1.0 equi was the equivalent of, like, one of the six or sevens, but it didn't really line up. So what they did is in 2008, they decided to make the release number the same as FreeBSD. So whenever uh, you got an install and it was, you know, PCBSD 10.3, that is directly mapped over to FreeBSD 10.3. And that's what it is built off of. So their release cycle follows the FreeBSD release cycle. Um, it's usually a couple days or so after FreeBSD is officially released before they release their version of the operating system. A lot of questions that people have had and that even I had myself and asked Chris at Texas Linux Fest, um, is PCBSD a fork? And the short answer to that is no, it is not. Um, it is meant to be a bleeding-edge desktop version and also server version of FreeBSD. My analogy for this is PCBSD is to FreeBSD as Fedora is to RHEL. Um, however, they don't have anywhere near as many releases. So it's more along the lines that PCBSD aims to be a place where a lot of development happens and a lot of bleeding-edge technologies are introduced. And if they're liked and they're really good, they get pushed back up into the FreeBSD source tree and then get integrated back in into the next release. So here are some of the features that are currently available in the 10.3 release. Um, it's a typical FreeBSD install, so it has all of your typical FreeBSD features, including uh, installed on top of ZFS, which is really nice. Um, it has an easy install and intuitive desktop interface. It's very easy to update laptop support for all the different laptop hardwares. It's secure, which uh, it's pre-configured with a firewall and an intrusion detection system. Um, it has a control panel for managing all of your operating system. Uh, it has your typical Linux desktop environments that you can install into. Uh, Cinnamon, Fluxbox, GNOME, KDE, LXCE, all those. It is installed by a graphical install instead of your usual text install. There is a lot of support for jails. Um, they even have a graphical environment called the Warden, which is used to manage your jails using Easy Jail. Um, it also has something really nifty called Life Preserver, which is a way for you to back up your system using ZFS snapshots if you did, uh, in fact, install on ZFS. Now, I'm telling you about all these wonderful things for PCBSD. However, next release cycle, it shall forever lose that name and hence become TrueOS. Uh, so for the FreeBSD 11, they will be changing the name. It will now be TrueOS Desktop. Currently, there is a TrueOS out there, and it's the server version of PCBSD. Um, I had asked Chris why they were doing this at Linux Fest, and he had said that they eventually want to be able to release, you know, TrueOS Embedded, but they didn't want to, you know, is it PCBSD Embedded? Is it TrueOS Server? Is it something else embedded? So they're going to the TrueOS name, and there's going to be TrueOS Desktop, TrueOS Server, and then eventually I think we can even look forward to like a TrueOS Embedded. So in the new TrueOS Desktop uh, coming out for version 11, Grub is being replaced with the FreeBSD bootloader. There's no longer any out-of-box support for desktop environments. They have written their own called Lumina, which is really nifty. Um, really nice to see somebody writing an entire uh, desktop environment. And it's written for PCBSD, so you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, did this work? Yeah. So... Uh, this is really coming out of all of the system D that's being sprinkled in all of the other desktop environments. GNOME is one for sure that I remember hearing about a couple years ago uh, was adding some system D isms, and it's making it difficult for other people that have not jumped on the system D wagon or drank the system D Kool Aid for for them to be able to continue to use it. Um, they will still support these environments, I believe, but not at install. They are able to be added through third party packages, um, just like in PCBSD and now in uh, TrueOS, they'll still have the App Cafe, which is kind of like, it's just a, Ubuntu, Ubuntu has it, I know Fedora has it, it's just a basic way, a graphical installer for packages, so that's pretty nifty. Um, an interesting thing that I've seen on there is they're now adding SysADM, and it's trademarked by IX Systems, client and server and, uh, to it, and most of the control panel utils are being rewritten in it. So I looked it up online, and the SysADM is a new configuration management 
kind of tool. Building being built by IX Systems that uses uh, WebSockets and REST built on Qt. So this is really interesting. Um, I'm really curious as to why this is being done. If you look on their GitHub page and you look in the current uh, documentation, it's still an alpha. Uh, SysADM is an alpha right now and is, you know, just barely starting. So I'm curious as to, one, why they're deciding to include it in TrueOS from the beginning. Because I believe, like, September of FreeBSD 11 is coming out. And, I mean, if they can get from alpha to production in a month, then, I mean, good for them. That would be great. Uh, but looking at the GitHub repository last night, I, I I personally feel a little bit queasy about it. So them adding alpha software for a big part of it kind of worries me. But, I, I mean, I trust these developers. I've never had any reason to doubt PCBSD or the FreeBSD people. So I'm going to hold my breath and hope that it works, and probably it will. Uh, but it's still enough to make me a bit nervous. And there's a lot of other things that are on their documentation. Um... One of the interesting things I liked about PCBSD is I could go back and get documentation on their main page all the way back to version 8.3, which was pretty cool. Um, I got a lot of the documentation, a lot of the show notes I was able to pull from different parts because, you know, in later documentation, they don't explain why they're doing this. But in the earlier documentation, they wanted to explain it. So I was able to pull a lot of it from there. The TrueOS 11 uh, documentation is already up. It is definitely um, not production ready. I'm pretty sure they're probably just hosting it there for developers. There are some broken links and some stuff in there that I've seen and uh, some incomplete sections. So hopefully that will most likely be updated by the time they release the operating system. But they're really, you know, doing a hard left and they're going to change this thing and they're adding in some interesting features the lumina and the sysadm are the things that jumped out to me but there's probably a lot more you know freebsd is going to have all these new features from 10.3 um one of my favorites is the fact that beehive is going to have native vnc support so that would be interesting you know finally pcbsd will have its own native hypervisor running on its own native uh desktop environment that i can boot like windows in or something you know if i want to do some gaming or just, you know, really feel like torturing myself, you know, boot Windows. So I'm really curious. Um, today's demo, we're actually going to install the July beta for TrueOS 11. We're not going to do a PCBSD install. And we're going to see uh, what it does and how it looks. I'm I'm actually really excited. Let's see. Let's go ahead and move on over to that. Okay, so now we are going to be installing TrueOS. Okay, so we can actually start the graphical install. So it starts off as a text install, but we can start off the graphics dissolve with a auto-detected video or the Versa SCFB. I don't even know what that is. Or we actually can install it via a text install, so that's pretty nifty. So let's go ahead and do this and start up the... Okay, that was odd there for a second. It was telling me that it couldn't find any screens, but then it found the screen. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on. Oh, looky, my mouse, wee. So we go next, uh, we're gonna do TrueOS, graphical desktop, TrueOS Core, which is a console-based server. And you can even restore from Life Preserver Backup. That's a nifty thing, um, is that you can, it's ZFS snapshot, so you just take the snapshot and then, you know, oops, restore it, comes right back in, and it's like, it's like nothing ever happened. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing my ZFS uh, installation for you, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I actually ordered books this week uh, from Michael W. Lucas. I'm going to read on all this advanced CFS stuff so I can properly do this for y'all. I'm over here now. Woohoo! Forgot to change the camera. Next. Okay, so we can customize uh, basic, new to BSD or disk partitioning, advanced experience with file systems, free, free BSD expert CLI manual mode. That's pretty nifty. Okay, so next we're going to just choose the entire disk. Finish, okay. Bootloader, oh, you actually can choose between your BSD and Grub bootloaders uh, right here at the beginning, so that's nifty. You can choose next. So the, yes, we'll start the customized disk installation. Okay, and now we are installed. So we could, if we wanted to, we could save our config to a USB in case we ever wanted to restore from a USB file. Um, not necessary for basic installations, but if you're doing some like funny stuff with your Zvols or any of that, it's not a bad idea. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish. 
And resolution is fine. Okay, brief PC BSD came up, but no biggie. Central time. No, not Mexican Central Time. It either does not like my Mac mouse, or that's a bug. There. TrueOS, we call this BSD Synergy. Fruit password. Okay, so you can use PersonaCrypt on this, so you can set that up at the beginning, but let's go ahead and create a user. Interesting, I can specify the, U, the UID right there. Uh, yeah, I've never had luck with... Uh, Audio card. Oh, nope, there it goes. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, so we can either disable IPv6 or enable SSH by default. So I'm just going to leave those alone. Setup is now complete. Press finish to log into your new desktop. And see that, oh, it still has Fluxbox for some reason. Yeah. But you would usually choose your desktop environment there. Mm -hmm. Loading my user preferences, making my workspace. We are now finalizing. A little bit of graphics poop. And there we go. If just beeped at me. I didn't like that. Da -da -da -da, something like that. Uh, after roughly four years of development, I'm pleased to announce the first official release of the Lumina desktop environment. This release is incredible realization. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, that's nifty. Nice that they put that there. Wow, it has like a little news feed thing there. It's an RSS feed. Oh, uh, one second. Um, so, let me move myself. No, not you. If I move myself over here, you can see what I was referring to down here. There's a built-in RSS feed right here, and it's got FreeBSD Newsflash. Oh, look, RC1 is available as of, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, I remember reading about that. So cool, you can add like little RSS things here. That's, that's nice. I don't make it go away now. <laughs> uh, go away. I'm done with you. Settings. Manual sync only. Default sync interval. Nifty. Uh, there's got to be a way to take care of the cupzilla? What the heck is that? I've never heard of that browser before. Okay. But that's okay. So it's like a regular. Start. Okay, so this is the True OS desktop. This is new. I'm not used to seeing that. Uh, go ahead and open up a terminal in Workspace One. Okay, we got Q terminal. Okay, and we're back to CSH as our default shell. Let me go ahead and move this over here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we do have PKG, we have the, the FreeBSD package installer over there, but then let's just go and look at some of the desktop stuff. So we have VLC installed, we have Trojita and Quip, and I've never heard of either of those two. Um, wonder why they didn't, eh. oh, damn it. Don't put me back down over here. Anyways, uh, Looks like they're really trying to stick, stay away from Mozilla, um, which is odd because most like of your like Fedora and stuff like that they install Mozilla by default, and I think on PCBSD you could actually default to have it there. But you know, and they would have uh, Thunderbird, but it seems like we're going with new apps now, so that's interesting. 
Uh, let's see what our... I clicked on documents. It's running a little bit slow, but got a sneaky suspicion again. I'm not giving it the resources it needs on my virtual machine. Uh, create a new file, new directory. Let's go back to mEgger. Okay. That's new. Uh, control panel. Little black hard drive. Okay, local system. Application management. SysADM server settings. Manage SSL keys. System management, boot environment, utilities, life preserver. Huh. So set up scrub, Z pool, it's in the tank frequency at this time. So this is how you set up backups. I, odd that the Z pool isn't set up properly. I think, I don't know, I'm, I've actually never used the Life Preserver um, replication snapshots. Let's create a snapshot. New snap. GUI snapshot. Those are all my Zvols. Okay, well, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'll admit that. Um, I've been waiting for, for this latest release in a while. I'm eventually going to build a, my own PC. I currently am just running off a MacBook Pro laptop that I've tried installing um, TrueOS on their uh, beta back in... No, probably the same one, back in July. And it, it, it worked up until I wanted multiple monitor support and wireless cards. And if there's one thing that I through my experience that I have learned is that whenever you're dealing with open source desktop environments, if there's two places it's going to kick you in the ass, it's going to be desktop environments and it's going to be wireless card support. And if you find one that can deal with both of those, the majority of the time the rest of your stuff's going to work just fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the App Cafe, which is another cool feature of TrueOS. Okay, so these are my installed ones. I have Cupzilla Q Terminal PKG uh... Do I have Git installed by base? I seem to. Okay, so home page, popular searches, web browsers. So, okay, so you can deal with all of that. I think that's a little bit bigger. That'll probably help, yeah. But my face is in the way, so. Okay, kind of transparent. That's kooky. Oh, nope, there we go. So, woo. Uh, go ahead and check desktops. Yeah, we can now install XFCE, GNOME, LXDE, Mate, or Matt, or whatever you want to call it. KDE, all that stuff. Multimedia. Okay, so if we search for Warden, we have a jail management facility utility. Um, I used to think this was installed by default, which I'm guessing it's not. So let's go ahead and install the Warden. A little bit glitchy, but I am going to attribute that to my lack of hardware that I gave it. It's probably only got like one CPU. It has half a gig of RAM and a really teeny tiny hard drive. It's probably not happy with me. Okay, back. So now let's go to here and let's look for the warden. Okay, I seem to be having a problem with the warden, uh, which I did not anticipate. Um, for some reason, the config file for the warden isn't there on install. You Maybe you have to set it up yourself. I think I found it and I've done it, but it is taking forever. So we're going to try...
Okay, it is setting up stuff. Okay, well I did put the 10.3 release in here. Probably not the best idea because this is an 11.0. Um, odd that this doesn't work out of box. I was reading some stuff online about IO Cage, and IX Systems has been has recontracted somebody to write it in Go, which I want to read up on because yeah, let's let's use a let's use a proprietary language from Google. That's a that's a great idea for that's a great idea for building a system. Okay, so I have a jail. So the warden is a command line utility, as well as as well as a graphical utility. Now, for some reason, my graphical utility is not working. But as you can see, I did just create a new jail. So I have a working jail. That that was as easy as it was to create for BSC jails. I'm not going to wait on the GUI, but what I will do is I will definitely put jails as one of my topics for another video, and actually not over just jails, but there'll be a video on jails, and then I'll have a video on the warden, and then I'll look into IO Cage. I've never heard of that, and from what I was reading online is that like. Tools like Easy Jail, which I know the warden utilizes, is they, it was pushed into production long before ZFS and Jails kind of got their act together. So, who knows? Maybe if there's not a decent ZFS warden or ZFS Jail tool that I approve of, maybe I'll write my own. Hmm. Okay, and that's everything I have for today. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you've got some friends that you think might like it, you know, send it to them. Have them subscribe too. If you like the video, leave a like. Uh, if you have any suggestions, comments, or stuff, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, I'm never going to claim that I have all the answers or that everything that I said today is correct. I do my best to make sure that everything that I do is accurate and will help guide you. But who knows? Maybe I do make mistakes. So if you catch one, please let me know. I would always like to know where I'm making mistakes because a lot of the times with some of this software I'm learning too you know I've used PC BSD before but like Dragonfly BSD for the video from last week I've never used that before in my life so I definitely could have made mistakes there um, I basically read what their documentation said so if uh, I make mistakes then there's bigger problems in the community than just me but you know I'll own up to them my mistakes everyone's mistakes I do want to add one thing however um, this install of the TrueOS 11, again, this is in beta. It's, it's actually an RC candidate. Um, I believe, I don't, I know FreeBS, the FreeBSD 11 is in an RC candidate. I don't know where they are in development on this. Uh, this one's actually from July. They haven't done a recent build that's publicly available yet. So if you weren't impressed by what you saw, wait and give it a bit. I decided to do the 11 release because it's what you're going to see very soon. Um, I'm going to in be installing FreeBSD 11 uh, on my servers, and I'm going to be doing PCBSD on my build whenever I build my machine at home. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, but, you know, I would say try not to judge this video so hard by on how well the uh, demonstration went. It's still a beta. It's still going to be buggy. I personally think that it's great. The new Lumina desktop compared to the old ones, because I had used uh, PCBSD with other things before, um, it wasn't that great. I didn't really care for it that much. But I have to say, this Lumina feels much better, and I bet when it's running on hardware that can actually support it, it's probably going to work really well. So, that being said... Wait, I'll, I may even do, whenever I get my own desktop up, I may even do like a this is a tour of my desktop kind of thing. Um, but we'll see. So definitely give it a shot. I would say go back and try 10.3. Go back, if you're really interested, go back, try PCBSD 10.3. It is super stable. Uh, I know the warden works on there. It's really cool. Um, I would say go with the default uh Desktop environment, I always seem to have trouble with GNOME, even though I do think that GNOME is probably one of my favorites. I never seem to be able to get it to work. So go ahead. If you're really interested in PCBSD, try 10.3. Um, if not, or you're willing to wait like I am, wait till 11. Wait till it gets a little bit more settled. They're doing a lot of changes and making a lot of different things with this. So of course it's going to be buggy. I'm going to be forgiving, and I hope that the community will too. 
So if you have anything for me, leave it in the comments below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.